Oh, landmines and jellyfish. Welcome back to Knives, I guess, and I've been told I have childbearing hips. I suspect I was lied to. But we just did a live stream and we went in on eh, the Gen Knives Vaquero. So most of you have seen plenty of coverage on this, especially from this channel. I've already done several videos. But if you haven't, Gen sells knife kits. You buy the kit, it comes in, and you put the knife together yourself with their instructions, and you get some T6 and T8 drivers and pivot lube, and it's a lot of fun. I thoroughly enjoy putting these things together. And, of course, it's worth noting they sent me this to check out. I didn't pay for it. Do with that what you will. But, uh, you know, I've gone over this thing before, and let's take a look at it. And first things first, and importantly, there's no pocket clip. It is in pocket clip purgatory. Um, you know, it's neither the Lord's carry, and it's not tipped down. We know I hate tipped down, but we all live in sin. Um, but, you know, you've got these uh, polished oxbone handles, heirloom fitted to the frame right here. You've got a thumb hole, so let's flick the hole. And, you know, a little under three inches of a uh, mirrored VG10 core Damascus with a sheep's foot blade. And, uh, you know, when I carried this, I tucked it in the back pocket. Due to the absence of a pocket clip, it carried pretty well there. Like, it never gave me any major problems. The factory edge was fantastic. It's one of the better ones I've gotten. You know, it did all of my cutting tasks quite, quite nicely. You know, I did my test on the plastic on the pallets. It did really well there. You know, I pushed, I pushed it through some cardboard, went through it like a laser. Like, it carried very, very well. You know, my only gripe was that, you know, there wasn't a notch on this side to do a reverse flick. Because, you know, flicking like this eh, is a little bit harder than reaching back here and doing a reverse flick. But if you're a lefty, guess what? It's set up for your reverse flick. That is something that, you know, my contact at Jen Emma, she said that's something they're working on for the revision of this thing, which is awesome. I love that about it. They're also working on getting the pocket clip situation straightened out. I sent them a solution for that that maybe they'll go with. Maybe they won't. I don't know, but I'm happy to be able to send the feedback. But, uh, you know, I went into this and wasn't sure what to expect. I kind of had my hopes set for four hours, but we've only done VG10 one other time, and um, even then we're not 100% sure about that, but that thing went for about two hours and just crapped out. And that thing on its factory edge wasn't having it. I had to put a custom edge on there, and it still only lasted about two hours. Uh, that was surprisingly dismal performance. This thing, like, it came out of the gate swinging. All right, these cuts were very nice. They were very clean, very easy, low-pressure cuts. And this is, of course, on the normal 32-pound cardboard-ish, you know, the stuff you'd normally be breaking down. It went through it just fine. And, uh, like, the edge wear, it started showing up after the first hour. Um, right in here, that first point of contact with the cardboard started, you know, showing some wear. It was hanging up on the paper, doing that cut on copy paper. And we kept going with it, and we got into the, the harder, more uh, sturdy 42-pound uh, or 44-pound crush test stuff. That took some pressure to push through. You know, right up here where the distal taper gets its finest, that was a pretty easy cut. But the farther back you got, the harder it got until you got into this area right here where the, uh, the flat grind stops and goes into the flat up here. Um, and, of course, that's going to be your highest resistance area. Um, it took a little bit more pressure than I expected to push through, but it wasn't unmanageable. Um, going into the second hour, it started really, really showing the wear. Um, the lightweight, easy-to-cut cardboard, it was still going through, but the edges were getting really ragged. Um, hitting that two-and-a-half-hour mark, you know, it was still it was starting to take more and more pressure to push through the easy cardboard, but that 44-pound stuff with more rigid walls, it was just rolling it and tearing it, and it wasn't really cutting anymore. So, uh, you know, it did better than that first VG10 example we had, noticeably on the factory edge. So they got that right, right there. Um, you know, and not having any expectations going into it, I feel like that was pretty satisfactory. I mean, that's right there with 8CR13, and from what I understand, that is about what is to be expected. So, uh, you know, like usual, the steel from their OEM apparently is good steel. It does exactly what you expect it to. You know, it didn't go crazy and do anything too mind-blowing. It was right there where it needed to be. And, uh, you know, one of the other things that I was interested in checking out was... The fact that you have a mirrored surface right here and a highly polished surface on this uh, VG10 core Damascus, and I've said that one too many times, and now VG10 core and Damascus have all lost their uh, their meaning to me. But, you know, I was interested in seeing how many scratches it picked up, because, like, we've done CR series steels, and those things pick up a ton of hairlines. A ton. 
This is not clean cardboard. It's full of dirt from being in more than one warehouse, being in the back of a truck, going into our back room. Like, there's a lot of grit in that stuff, which is why I like using it. That's why it punishes edges so hard. But let's see if I can get the right lighting on this. And uh, so you can see there are hairlines there. And on this side, there are also the hairline scratches. So it definitely picked up hairline scratches, which is a bit of a bummer because, you know, it kind of definitely interrupts the mirrored surface. But that's what we were there to do. You know, that's what we were there to find out. And, of course, my point of contact at Jen was also interested in seeing how many hairlines this picked up. Because I don't think they knew. Because I'm doing stuff to this thing that it was definitely not intended to do. You know, it was not intended to do what we did to that for two and a half solid hours. Um, and I mean, that was just non-stop pushing through. We even got to the middle of the stream and did the pizza box because I spoil you guys. Um, you know, and one of the other things to note is starting off the ergos, the ergonomics were pretty good. You know, the, uh, the heirloom fit of the ox bone to this frame right here feels pretty decent. It's crowned over nicely. Like everything is done really well here. However, the farther we got into it, the more pressure this right here, this corner put onto this part of my hand from you know, holding it like that and pushing down for so long. And again, I have had knives that were so much more painful than that, that just tore the skin up right here. Like, here's the blister that's still not healed up from the, uh, the, the O-Knife Century L1, like, two weeks ago. You know, there's some wear and tear from last week's live stream, and this, it was fine after an hour or two. Like, this is pretty well, you know, no major deal. While it was happening, it started getting really uncomfortable, but, you know, once I stopped, it was fine pretty quickly. So, uh, the ergonomics, definitely adequate, quite acceptable. You know, if, if I wasn't doing something that was so abusive to this that it wasn't meant to do, never have a problem with it whatsoever. And, uh, you know, so we had a, we had a great time on that live stream with that. I definitely enjoyed playing with it and cutting with it and abusing it. And, of course, you know, we had to stop and sharpen it. And we put a 17-degree edge on there. And, uh, you know, we'll show you how that do. You know, this thing took a very, very nice edge. And, of course, we're on camera, so I borked the cut pretty badly. Um, we keep the property value low around here. But, yeah, I mean, this thing is cutting like it is nothing. Um... And, you know, part of the reason we did the 17 degree edge is, you know, one of my guys that knows more than I do about steels and such and whatnot said that 14 degrees would be the best way to go for a slicer. But I'm giving this to my dad the next time I see him because this is kind of his style. Like, he really likes stuff that looks like this. This is kind of his vibe. So I figure I could pass it off to him because he carries like a Swiss Army knife and he doesn't really have like a dedicated pocket knife. And I think this would suit him very well. So I put a good using edge on it because I also know it's probably not going to see a sharpening for a good little while. Um, and then when it finally does, he'll probably get to his Tormac sharpener and do something crazy with that. But very highly polished, very mirrored edge. It took to the strop very well. Like this thing does good overall at everything. You know, I know it sets out to be like a, a more gentlemanly carry and something a little bit classier and uh, something a little bit more premium. And it does that really well. Like and. I loved showing this thing off at work when I had it. You know, I just handed the guys and go, hey, check this out. And there was always that thoroughly, thoroughly impressed reaction followed by the, this is nice or this is badass, like this is fantastic. Um, and I got to agree, you know, they're, they're, the only things I'd really change about this are making the reverse flick possible. Why am I messing up these cuts so bad? But, you know, make the reverse flick possible and put a pocket clip on it. And they're working on both of those things right now. So, uh, you know, I am looking forward to seeing what comes out next. However, it is with a heavy heart that I say this will be the last uh, Gen Knives video for a while until they release some new stuff and they send me something new to check out, which they have a button lock in development right now, which will be on the way sooner or later. I cannot wait to check that out. I want to see how the inside of a button lock is and, and you know, like I've gotten a good look at it and I've seen how they work, but having it all apart and uh, putting it together, that's a whole nother level of understanding that I am looking forward to. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what's next. And I've asked them for a big old goofy pocket cleaver, so hopefully something like that happens. Just do it for me, guys. But uh, yeah, uh, so again, overall, this thing did really good. You know, it did what should be expected of it for the uh, Cardboard Slayer live stream. The ergos were definitely acceptable. You know, it, it handled well. It took everything like a champ. And, you know, like I said, it's... It's good. It's solid. Like, if you buy the kit and put this together, you'll have a good daily carry, a good user, and it'll look great. You can show it off. Like, it's got a lot going for it. But, uh, yeah.
I like it. I love this kit. I love the end result. Um, personally, for me, this thing is awesome. It's beautiful. It's a gentleman's carry. I love it. But all that being said, thanks for looking at my crap. Subscribers, you guys are awesome. Y'all are pouring in right now. I appreciate you guys so much. You have no idea. Like, it means a lot to me that y'all watch these videos and get something out of it. I can't thank you enough. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do. I've got four knives to give away at 2K, so get in here and try to win yourself a knife. And comments, I love some feedback. Let me know what you think about this. I know a bunch of you guys have these now, so let us know what you think of them. I can't be the only voice here. And all that being said, y'all have a nice day.